Hi there, this is Saul Chironin from Saul Chironin Films and welcome to our episode of In The Frame. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, Katsuhito Ishii or Ishii Katsuhito and focus on the third window box set which is lovely and colourful as is his films. So we get Shark Skin Man um, from 1998 um, sorry, Shark Skin Man and Peach Hip Girl from 1998, Party 7 from 2000, Promise of August from 1995, um, Sora Soy from 2008, Hello Junichi um, from 2014 and Norioka Workshop from 2022. Some of these are feature length, some of these are um, shorts. Um, third Window also have Funky Forest and Warped Forest and also the taste of tea but I'm not going to talk about these um, I think I've done a random review for these on the channel so if you want to go um, check that out they're available now um, Japanese filmmakers um, called Ishii there is um, three of them there's uh, Ishii Tarao who's an older filmmaker Arrow has in front um, Inferno of Torture, like Joy of Torture, and Horrors of the Malformed Men. Um, you probably got my favourite um, Ishii. This is Ishii Sogo, the Burst City, which is an Arrow, um, Electric Dragon, 80,000 Volts, which is on Third Window, um, Crazy Thunder Road, strangely enough, on Third Window. Um, and Punk Samurai, which is an absolute masterpiece when he changed his name to Ishii Gakuryu, just um, for awkwardness. Um, Punk Samurai is absolutely fantastic. But we're not talking about those two Ishis, we're talking about Ishii Katsuhito. Um, again, this is an unbelievably colourful set from Third Window. Now I will say um, Ishii Katsuhito might be my third favourite um, Japanese director called Ishii. But don't get me wrong, it's just, this set is still fabulous. Um, but I'll get to maybe why he's only my third favourite Ishii. Um, so in this, the first disc of Sharp Skin Man and Peach Hip Girl and the short Promise of August and then Party 7 is in its disc by itself and then we have three films on the last disc um, which is Sora Soi, um, Hello Junichi, Junchi um, and Norioka Workshop um, Sora Soi and Hello Junichi keep wanting to speak in Italian rather than Japanese um, are feature length and Norioka Workshop um, is a half hour short now I'm going to go through the list of actors I will have to read them, I apologise um, you might not recognise the names but you recognise the faces because pretty much any actor who um, was in Japanese cinema in the 90s and 2000s. They're all in these films um, the same way quite a lot of them are in um, Takeshi Kitano films. So you've got Terajima Susumu, Susumu um, Asano Tadanobu, of course, they're probably more famous. Um, Kashibe Itoku, who's in the Outrage films. Um, Turusima Shingo, Tasuda Kanji, Tanaka Yoji, Gashun Tatsuya, um, Morishita Yosuyuki, Nagase Masatoshi, who's obviously been in Jim Jarmusch films as well, Horibe Kazuki, Harada Yoshio, Osugi Ren, of course, sadly no longer with us, um, Dankin and Morioka Ryu. I mean, 
so many familiar faces um, in these films, it's quite ridiculous. Um, so we'll start on disc one with Shark Skin Man and Peach Hip Girl um, from 1998. Um, Catch you to Ishii's debut feature. Um, both this and Party 7 have some of the, the best character introductions in cinema history. The character inter introductions are wonderful. But both these films, I suppose I might as well talk about them as a pair, um, Shark Skin Man and Peach Hip Girl from 1998 and Party 7 from 2000, because they both kind of work together. Um, they're both about people on the run from Yakuza from stealing money. Um, the first one is Asano Tadanobu um, and the second one he is also in but he didn't steal the money. Um, Nagasi Masatoshi did. And the films are very energetic. I mean, Shark Skin Man and Peach Hip Girl just have a ridiculous cast. There's all these Yakuza um, chasing um, the main character who hooks up with Peach Hip Girl, who's just a bank clerk, um, and cross country and meeting lots of characters. Now, all the Yakuza have their own little ticks and idiosyncrasies. Um, one of them's a knife expert, <coughs> one of them carries a baseball bat around. Um, but kind of the reason why Ishii Katsuhito's probably my, fa my third favourite Ishii is um, I just feel that these films they're too long um, they should have been tighter and with the casts he has in these two films you just get the nagging sense these films should have been better um, I'll get to what my favourite film on this set is which is a bit of a surprise um, but again don't get me wrong both Party 7 and Shark Skin Man and Peach Hip Girl are a lot of fun but for me they just should have been better um, and again, you know, there is two early films, um, so not everybody comes out of the gate, you know, on top of their game. But again, don't get me wrong, they look fabulous, they are a lot of fun, there's moments of genius in them. Um, but for me, there's scenes that just drag on a little bit too long. Um, maybe it's a lost in translation Japanese humour, even though I'm generally can get Japanese humour um, but I just think there's a few scenes that just go on a little bit too long um, so Shark Skin Man and Peach Hip Girl is more of a road movie um, as they're getting chased um, and it kind of ends up in a climactic um, climax strangely enough um, there's wonderful action scenes in it there is great comedy um, you know, Asano Tabanobu is just as cool as ever. Um, Party 7 is a much kind of smaller um, group. Um, there's seven main characters pretty much. And they're in a hotel. Um, Asano comes back and he's a peeping Tom. He's a young man who's a peeping Tom and he's out of prison. Um, and his father has died and the owner of the hotel is now uh, Captain Banana and he has a special secret room made for um, Asano so he can peep on the whole hotel and they focus on a room um, where um, these characters are arguing over stolen money. Yeah, it's Japanese. It's all a bit strange um, but again it's enjoyable but for me it should have been better than it actually is. Um, the short Promise of August um, is actually my favourite out of those three. Um, 
I think it's about 50 minutes long and it tells the story you know the, those first two films are fairly um, male dominated whereas Promise of August um, which is I guess well it's certainly the first film on here from 1995 it's about three girls who steal a map for potentially a marijuana crop out in the countryside um, and they come across um, a driver called Dan- or played by Duncan who's thinking about killing himself um, but he gets embroiled with these three characters um, who are trying to look for a marijuana cop crop a marijuana cop yeah um, there's a Japanese idea marijuana cop is probably a superhero um, they come across two bikers who um, somewhat change their appearance when they're out in the country um, it's just a lot of fun beautiful countryside um, and there's a bit more depth to the characters than perhaps um, in the other two films I talked about which perhaps have a little bit too much focus on how cool the characters are rather than perhaps three dimensional characters um, so for me Promise of August is a lovely little short and maybe because it is not feature length um, it's just tighter I mean there's still moments that they let sit you know it's not a, a fast pace that kind of slows down the pace a bit more so I feel that's kind of more I don't say successful but it's more kind of um, more to my taste again this is all just personal opinion and as I say so many times my opinion is not fact um, so disc one has a new interview with Kashito Ishii it's got a shark skin man and peach hip girl um, commentary by Ishii and it's also got a video essay by Robert Edwards it's an excellent overview um, of Katsuhito's work um, this too with party 7 has a commentary by Arnie Venema and Mike Leader um, it's got a storyboard version of the film uh, it's got a making of an archival interview um, with the director, alternate ending an original trailer and the original teaser and then disc 3 which has no extras but it's got the three films um, so Sora Soy from 2008 is based on an island and a not very successful dram- and dancing troupe are practicing for the big annual competition where they always struggle um, with their um, crippled dance teacher and added to the mix is um, a woman who comes to the island pretty much to commit suicide um, there's the kind of sexual politics of the boys and the girls and who wants to um, have sex with who um, but her story kind of intermingles with the dance troupe um, there's some wonderful moments um, of comedy it's more of a character piece and it's a really nice um, film it has beautiful um, countryside again um, and it's rather um, wonderful and again I kind of prefer that to his more manic um, kind of cool first two films I think when he actually slows down he's a better filmmaker but again that's just that's just my feeling um, again I've just watched these films once so obviously when I watch them again I'll probably, I'm sure I'll perhaps prefer Sharkman and Peach Hip Girl and Party 7 a little bit more than I did on first watch. And then I'll go to 2022's Narika Workshop, which is a half hour short. And again, I'm not being critical or anything, but the shorter um, Katsuhito as she is, I think the better he actually gets. Um, so it's about an actor um, who's arranged this workshop but it might be slightly under um, false pretenses 
um, he gets a phone call from a director um, saying he wants him to play the role of a con man so he's researching and then the two would-be actresses turn up um, and he starts his workshop and then things aren't necessarily um, as they appear and the kind of truth of what's going on changes a couple of times within the half hour. It's a lot of fun. Um, nice performances. Again, nice humour. And it's just what you want in a short film. Um, it does what it needs to do. It's efficient. Um, and it's really enjoyable. And then, bizarrely, we come to 2014's Hello... Um, Unichi, which um, for me is a five-star film and it's a film that I should absolutely detest. Um, I should hate this film with every fibre of my being, um, but I didn't. Um, I absolutely loved it and it actually um, put something in my eye that actually made my eyes water a little bit. Um, it's the story of a bunch of primary school kids. I know, it's just like, it, I should absolutely detest it um, because kids are like my least favourite animal. Um, it kind of focuses on Junichi, but you have his friends. Um, there's a girl who wants to be a kind of pop idol um, you've got a kind of bigger kid who's a bit of the prototypical um, bully. You've got the child actor who fancies himself um, being an expert on the ladies, despite the fact he's like nine. Um, you have the the smart kid who's got a rich family. Um, and they find a cell phone, um, eventually give it back to the the owner and they're very ashamed. Um, they have a teacher um, played by poor Morishitsa Yoshiyuki or Yoshiyuki even um, who always plays like weirdos and so he's like a 45 year old teacher with they've enhanced his big buck teeth who doesn't have luck in romance um, and then we have a student teacher um, who's glamorous and gorgeous who at first is a bit of a pain she's just here just for the credit but then slowly she helps these kids and again it's a film I should absolutely hate um, maybe if it was English language I would absolutely hate it but there's just something about it you know the kids give wonderful performances it ends up they want to give a concert to for one of their mothers who are, is going through a tough time um, so they get a band together um, but they're m uh, eventually they end up they're missing a guitar player it's again I should absolutely detest it you know you could argue it's predictable you know you could argue it hits all the right notes um, but it's just so good um, his um, Yunichi's granddad pretty much looks after him when he comes back from school um, and he's always kind of telling him you know and on the other side of a bad thing there's usually a good thing that comes out of it and one day you'll understand these things so his granddad is fairly philosophical um, every time Yunichi comes to him um, again it just shouldn't it shouldn't work for me I should detest it but I absolutely loved it. Um, it. I actually put a smile on your face um, and a tear in your eye. So bizarrely, I mean, it was co-directed by a couple of people, the same way Funky Forest was. And again, not to be critical, but I do think Katsuhito Ishii, or Ishii Katsuhito, does better when he, he does have collaborators or when he makes his films shorter um, but again that's just an opinion and my opinion is not fact but I know this is limited to 2000 and it might be out of print um, 
but I'm sure they will release individual um, releases. They've done that for um, Toyota sets. But this is well worth picking up. Again, it's, you know, you get six films. Um, they're all, at worst, good films. Um, and at best, they are a lot of fun um, and quite wonderful with, again, if you're familiar with 90s and early 2000s Japanese cinema, a host of familiar faces. Um, the music's always good. Um, again, the intros to Party 7 and Shark Skin Man and Peach Hip Girl are just absolutely wonderful. Um, and they all look gorgeous on Blu-ray. Um, I would recommend Taste of Tea and Funky Forest Warp Forest as well from Third Window. Um, because Third Window generally never disappoint. Um, so that's the Third Window um, Ishikatsu Hito set. Um, I apologise for the rambling video. Um, but please let me know if you've seen these films and which one you prefer. Um, as I say, Hello Unichi was not the film that I was expecting to, the be to be the best film or the one that I enjoyed the most out of the set, but there you go. That's the beauty of cinema and the beauty of Japanese cinema. Um, you just never know what you're getting. So thanks very much for watching this episode of In The Frame and hopefully you'll join me for more episodes of In The Frame in the future. This is Solitary Ronin from Solitary Ronin Films saying farewell. <laughs>